Hello everyone, my name is uh, Angel Valencia and I'm a master's student at the University of Ottawa and today I'm presenting uh, results in the shape um, tracking of deformable objects under robotic manipulation. So here's the outline of my presentation. First, let's see the problem. So why uh, manipulation of the formal objects is important. So it turns out that the real environments are filled with the vast amount of uh, the formal objects. Most important one, the, for instance, food, uh, human organs, and some household objects. And current manipulation strategies tend to fail more often when these kind of objects are present. Basically because uh, the formal the objects are less studied. And uh, it's a more complex problem since uh, theoretically it's an uh, infinite degrees of freedom. And sometimes the environment is as much rigid. And also, most of the state of the art manipulation strategy depends on um, simulators and the tuning of material parameters. So, here, uh, the problem that we're dealing here is the sensing and the modeling. So, um, we're proposing here a precession system which is capable of measuring the deformation but integrating uh, sensory signals with the uh, robot's actions. And so we have to define the technology and modality, uh, the localization and uh, the interaction in the environment and uh, the sampling and the representation. Uh, finally, uh, there is a um, suggestion that the deformation tracking and prediction will help to more uh, robust uh, control and planning uh, for the robot. So uh, this is the current state of the art in sensing and modeling. Basically, sensing can be divided uh, between vision and tactile or a multimodal, which combine the two. And the modeling, uh, the modeling part can be defined for physical uh, base models, which are popular in computer graphics, for instance, uh, geometric models, and finally, uh, learn models, which combine um, machine learning uh, techniques to learn the model from data. So basically, we are dealing here with a uh, vision-based system using depth cameras and a learn-based model. So here's the perception system. Basically, uh, we're dealing here with the shape tracking of the objects, uh, of the object shape, which in this case is like a sponge. And we also keep track of the robot's fingers. So we have three fingers that is uh, basically squeezing an object. So we're assuming that the manipulation is quasi-static and uh, the material is, uh, is elastic. So the methodology for, for represent the depth uh, data, we're using uh, Gorinio gas, which is a neural network that can represent the data distribution as a graph. So basically, our object is going to be discretized, uh, like this graph, after the training of this network. So uh, we're in this graph, we have uh, uh, the nodes O, which are the blue, and basically the edges represent the connections. And this is for the representation. And uh, roughly speaking, the neural gas uh, computes, uh, it's based on comparative learning, which means that it finds a node for the graph which is closest to a sample, uh, in, in this case epsilon, which this sample is, the, is a point load, for instance and it updates uh, a set of features. In this case, the features are uh, the distances between this, uh, between the sample and, uh, and, the, and the closest node. And after that, it also updates the position of these nodes by using uh, basically the distance between the nodes which is close to the, point, to the, to the sample and multiply by the learning rate. It does uh, this um, update for the closest node and also for the nodes which are in the neighbors. So basically updates, uh, let's say that this is the closest node to this part with updates the, the closest node and also the neighbors. So that's the idea. And that would create a, a graph representation. After that, we need some way to um, map the deformation uh, for the uh, robot's action. So for that, we are using a, a neural network which uh, can be described as particle graph network, which is a graph neural network that the, basically we're using to predict a relational structure from the, from, the de from the graph that we defined previously with uh, growing neural gas. So here we are using the same graph, but we're adding uh, the node, nodes representing, for instance, the, the robot's action, in this case, the fingers that I mentioned. And this graph is directed since the, 
uh, where we were going to learn how the actions of the of the manipulation it's changing the shape. Uh, basically, the nodes are um, the nodes in this case are updated using a, a estimated function f o, and this function f o depends of the current node and its features, and also of the effects of the edge. As you can notice, that we have different, in this case, if we look at the first node, the green one, we want to update this node. So it's going to depend of the features, the node 06 in this case, and also of the edges. As you can see, it has four edges which are uh, interacting. So we need to uh, perform a contribution. In this case, we are using the sum of these edges. But we could use, for instance, the mean for doing uh, this kind of propagation. That, would, that way we, we would uh, uh, estimate the, the nodes. And for the edges, how, how can we get the edge uh, uh, effect? So basically we're using, in this case, uh, an, another function fr, which, uh, uh, which depends of the node sender, in this case 03, and the node receiver 06. In that way we would get the effects. And these functions f o and f r are trained using gradient, gradient based learning well, or artificial neural networks. And so, in our approach, we are um, for the grown needle gas, which was, which was the representation part, we are making a few changes in order to work for a uh, time constraint that we're having. So, for instance, we are using the quantization error as a, as a metric for a stopping learning. Basically, this metric will give us a more control to the to the um, to the representation for a non distribution that means that if we have objects are, that are bigger or objects that are smaller we can set for instance a five millimeters of precision and that we get uh, different um, sampling for different uh, objects with different shapes and sizes and we are also applying partial learning in the in the representation it means that we are since we are dealing with sequences of point clouds. Uh, we could use the representation obtained for the for the actual frame and use that for subsequent frames. So we are not learning from scratch, and also we are we are uh, dynamically updating uh, the features uh, by penalizing uh, samples that are far from the quantization error that we compute. In that way, we are uh, updating to nodes uh, to. So it's, it helps to avoid outliers, for instance. Uh, here I'm supposed to show an animation, but uh, I'm just going to show you the our modified version of the. Okay, this is the this is our modified version. So, and so as you can see, the notes the no, the blue notes are f tracking the shape, and the notes. And the, the red ones are basically the fingers and they're acting into the shape so in that way we have the representation and yeah so that's the idea uh, we, we can get the representation to the shape of the object and uh, with respect to the interaction in this case okay so I guess I need to click here. Okay, yeah. So this is this are um, some result for timing a bit. So for instance, to notice why it's important partial learning, uh, as you can see here, since for instance we are using the, the frame one to compute the graph, so it takes uh, 20 27 20, uh, seven seconds. Uh, but for instance, if if we use the same graph but we use to the next frame, we can see that the time is in, is decreased cons considerably. So um, that would be one uh, uh, in interesting uh, result of that. OK, so in summary, for the representation part, we see that the growing air gas uh, as a methodology for tracking the deformable shapes. And considering that, for instance, uh, in order to, to work with uh, a robotic hand, we need uh, at least two frames per second to to ensure uh, a good grasp, so we can see that modified version of Gromino gas can perform a potentially real-time 3D shape representation. Uh, in the case of the particle graph network that we use for the prediction, so 
uh, you can see that, for instance, there are nodes states that we are using as features. We need the, the velocities in order to, to uh, get a state estimation of these particles. So the velocities are computed for the position of the nodes obtained from the uh, growing oil gas representation. And for instance, here that also the features that we're using are position based. So it, mean, it means that it is kind of learning may be suitable for the dynamic system based um, on uh, a position base. So we can potentially uh, avoid using material parameters as a feature. And this is supposed to be the result of the prediction. But for so for instance, in this animation, we are seeing five seconds of the prediction. In this case, the the shape is actually not seen. Uh, the, 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 the green shape is not fitted to the, you know, given to the network. So the network is basically there, it's basically showing how the the, no, the green nodes will deform is the red nodes are approaching. So in, this, in that way we can perform forward simulation and potentially doing a uh, feedback control. But this is just the, the first five seconds. After that, it is not perfectly accurate, the prediction. So in summary for the uh, particle graph networks, it's supposed a methodology for deformable shape prediction. And we can see that it's the integration with growing oil gas for representing the point loss as a graph allows to uh, inference methods such as the particle graph network, which initially it's, it's has been just applied to simulation engines to work with uh, real interactive sensor data. And so the contribution would be to uh, the, the sensing part. So we're proposing an interactive perception system which automate the deformation measurements of 3D different objects. And with respect to the modeling, so we're here proposing a graph based methodologies for the representation and prediction of 3D different shapes with potential of real time execution doing uh, robotic applica applications. At the same time, we're also showing a potentially to forward simulation framework of the deformation, which are based on uh, real world observation, and again, it can potentially be used for um, feedback control. And future words might be to improve the convergence or GNG, since it's not that fast right now because it uh, it takes one second, but um, it might need uh, more more uh, contribution there. Also, training with a variety of objects, exploring multi multiple views, or maybe using multi sensing data, maybe tactile, will improve the models as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.